So in the last video, we left off right here. And this video, we're going to talk about how to create a room and how to dimension a room. Now, we've already created a room, but we really didn't get too much into what makes up a room. So let's do that before we start uh, creating that room that we were looking at, creating and dimensioning. So let's just go ahead and click on the room anywhere right in here. So we can take a look at some of the, 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 the properties of the room and some of the, uh, the things that come up with it. You'll notice, first of all, you've got here, you've got an interior dimension, 12 feet. And you've got an exterior dimension here, 12 foot 8. And that's because it defaults to a 4 inch wall over here and a 4 inch wall over here. So when you add those two 4 inches, you get that 12 foot 8. And then you'll notice a couple of other things here. We've got a room name right here. And we've got a room handle right next to it. That's called a room handle. And with that room handle, you can move the room. So if I left click and grab that room handle, I can move the room. Now, what's the difference in that and the pan tool? Well, the pan tool, if I hit the space bar, moves the entire drawing. But the room handle just moves the room. So that's the difference between the uh, room handle and the pan tool. So let's uh, just grab that handle and move it around a little bit just so you can do that. And then you'll also notice we have a little square in the middle of every wall. And that's called a wall handle. And that's how you move walls. And we're going to do that in just a little bit. But you'll notice right there, there's my four wall handles. Now be careful not to confuse a wall handle with a window or door handle. Because you'll notice that if I click here on the window, that's a window handle. If I click on the door, that's a door handle. So be careful where you click because you want the correct handle. Typically, the handles are in the middle of whatever it is you're talking about. So try not to confuse one with the other. And then the other thing that you see here is this hand pointing at a piece of paper. And that's your properties window there. And if you left click on that hand with a piece of paper, you'll notice you're going to get a screen that looks like this. And this shows you all the properties of this room. So for example, this is why you see the floor height starts at zero. Your wall thickness is at four. Your ceiling height defaults to eight. Now you can change any of these right here, but that's what it defaults to. And then down here, you'll see a whole bunch of variables. Okay. So like, for example, the C stands for the ceiling. There's 144 square feet of ceiling because 12 by 12 is 144. Floor is the same way. Floor removal right here. That's what they use for carpet and tile. For flooring and then you've got your high wall your long wall your pc is your perimeter of ceiling your pf is perimeter of floor you've got a lot of different variables in here the v is volume for your water mitigation because they do a lot of their stuff like the fogging of the room is done by volume w is the square foot of walls wc is the square foot of walls and ceilings wall opening lineal feet wall opening perimeter wall opening square feet wall opening square feet deducted now it's a lot for to ask for you to know what all those things mean right so if you're not sure what you can do is you can click right here where it says click for all variables and what it does is it pulls up another screen and it tells you what all those things mean and if you're looking for something, there's even a search up at the top. So if I want to see the perimeter of the ceiling or the floor, I can type in perimeter. And there it brings up all everything that has the perimeter in it. So that's a handy little tool there. Now, these variables are a huge part of the certification tests. You're going to be asked a lot from these variables. And the guideline I usually give my students is if you pull out a calculator during the test, you're doing it wrong because everything they ask will be here in the variables as far as square footages and quantities. Um, for example, if you draw a set of stairs and they ask you how many square feet of walls under the stairs, believe it or not, there's a variable in there, WBS, wall beneath stairs. So everything they ask for is going to be right here. You just got to know how to access it. Now, if you close that up, you can X that or just hit the close button at the bottom. And then click anywhere outside that box, and that's going to get rid of that properties window. And now I'm going to show you the shortcut to the properties windows. All you have to do is double click on the room, and that brings up the properties. So that's a little bit about kind of getting around the room here. And you'll notice that when you open up the properties, it defaults to the room name. So you can immediately start typing, and it will, like a Google search, sort of pre-populate what you're looking for. You don't have to click 
right there. You don't have to erase that. I love to watch it when people, they have to click here first and then erase it. And it's like, there's two seconds you'll never get back. All you have to do is start typing. So if I want the master bedroom, notice when I put in the M, it goes to masonry. A-S stays at masonry. As soon as I hit the T, it thinks master bath. E-R, space. And as soon as I hit the B-E, it knows enough that that's the bedroom. Now, recently they have gotten rid of the words master bedroom and master bath. I guess some people didn't like the word master, so it's now gone. It does not pre-populate master bedroom and master bath. It pre-populates primary bedroom and primary bath. You can still write in master bedroom and master bath. It's just not going to pre-populate it for you. Some of these you can put in just with one letter. Like, for example, a walk-in closet. As soon as you hit the W, there it is because there aren't too many rooms to start with a W. So depending on what you want, and now you can either click out of it or hit enter, and there you've renamed the room. Now I've gotten in the habit of hitting enter because that way if, I, if there's anything else I need to do in the properties, I don't have to reopen up the properties. If I click out of it, then I got to go back into it. So I like hitting enter. That way it stays where I am. And if there's any other changes I need to make, I can do them. So that's how you kind of get around a room here. So now let's just take a look at, at creating a room and, and starting to dimension it. So let's just go ahead and click on the room anywhere. And you can either right click if you're a right clicker. Some people like right clicking and hitting delete. Me, I just like, like hitting delete on my keyboard. Either way, let's delete that room and let's start over with how to dimension a room. So let's take a look at how to dimension a room. So to begin with, let's go ahead and put a room down and let's use the shortcut because you want to make every effort to try to learn to use shortcuts, especially since they're so easy for so many of them. So let's just hit the R key and we're going to put down a room and that room it defaults to a 12 by 12. So what we want to do is we want to take this room and per the exercise in the book, we want to make this room 18 feet wide by 15 feet, 15 feet, six tall. So let's, let's work on the width here first. We want to make it 18 feet wide. Now let's look at this. We've got a 12 foot wide room here and you can see the 12 right there. And what does that 12 represents? It represents the distance between this wall and that wall. So if I want, and you can see that the, the uh, dimension lines here point from those two walls. So you notice how that dimension line goes to that wall, and then this dimension line goes to that wall. So if I want to make that room wider, that means that I either need to move this wall here, or I need to move this wall here. Either one of those will change that 12 foot dimension there. So let's go ahead and make that 12 feet 18 feet wide. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this handle right here on the right side. And what I mean by, by grab that handle is left click, hold, and drag. And notice that now, and you'll see that the, the arrow there pointing to this wall showing that this is the wall that's, go that's going to move. And this notice how it affects this dimension here. We moved it to 15. So now that we've, we've moved it and activated the dimension and the way you can tell that it's activated is it's blue. Now that it's activated, we can click on the number. So go ahead and click right here on the 15 or whatever number you happen to pull it to. And I'm going to type in 18. And you remember we type in uh, dimensions by feet, comma, inches. And since we have no inches here, it's not necessary to type in the comma zero. So now we're just going to hit enter on the keyboard. And when we click on the room, that will show you that we have our 18 feet wide. So now we want to make this 12 feet, 15 foot six. So again, we want to move either this wall or this wall. Why? Because we're trying to change the height. And you'll notice that the dimension lines are pointing to here and to here. So that means I need to either move the top wall or the bottom wall. One of the mistakes that many, many people make is they assume that to change this 12 that I need to grab the nearest handle to it. And it's never the nearest handle. It's always one that's adjacent to it. So I'm going to have to move either this wall, which is adjacent to this 12 foot, or move this wall, which is adjacent to that 12 foot right there. So I'm going to pull the top. And what I mean by pull is left click, hold and drag up. And I'm going to let it go as soon as it's blue. My dimension is blue. 
and now I'm going to type in 15 foot 6, which is 15 comma 6. I'm going to hit enter, and now I've got my room 18 wide, 15 foot 6 tall. And that's how you dimension a room. So uh, we're going to end this video here because we want to keep these videos short so that you can practice them as much as you want. And um, that way you're uh, not um, sitting at the computer too long. You can watch them as many times as you want before you're ready to go to the next one. So that was the video, the end of the video on how to dimension a room. Now, if you like those last two videos, those are two videos from my self-paced training, the Level 1 Fundamentals course. Uh, the introduction to the sketch tab and creating and dimensioning a room. So when you purchase the level one course, you will get those two videos in there. As a matter of fact, when you purchase the course, you can go into my website as a member and you can see right here, I've got the page pulled up and you can see I've got all the titles of all the videos here. They're actually linked so that they'll take you down to the videos. And then as you scroll down below, there's the videos right there. And you can see that they're in the order, the logical order that they were intended to be to improve your retention. So like we start off with navigating the main page, then setting up preferences, then creating a project. Then we go into the claim info tab and there's three tabs, three tabs that you're primarily going to work with, the insured info tab, the coverage loss tab, and the parameters tab. And then after that is when you would learn to start sketching. And that was the two videos you saw. You saw this one here, Intro to the Sketch tab, which was about 20 minutes. And then you saw Creating and Dimensioning Room, which was about 10 and a half minutes. And as you scroll down, you'll see the rest of the class there. And like I said, it's in logical order. It's in the same order as the class. And then at, when you get to the end, you'll see here a little test prep to help you out with, with taking the level one test if you're interested in that. And then down below it, I've got some situational videos, which are videos that I don't normally have time to go through in the class, uh, but I wanted to add here so to give you a little extra. And there's also some downloadable documents so that you can see when you take uh, the course from me, you, know, you get a lot of extras. And if you want to see what the classes are like, just go to my website, www.crestllc.com. And you go to the home page here, and you'll see there's my website there. But really, the, the probably the most important page on here is this testimonial link right here. If you click on that testimonial link, you'll see what my students think. There's a lot of, I ask everyone to review my class. Um, so far in five years, I haven't gotten a bad review. And, and everyone, I, I ask to please review my class because I want to know if there's something I can do better. And then if you're interested in training, you can come up here to where it says, class schedules, training options. You'll see there's a drop down menu. You can go to the live virtual class, the self-paced training or the classroom training, which is primarily in Florida. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more videos and have a great day.